Hello, Cem Tezcan here. I released an update for my CRT VCR filter, uh, which is usable in Unreal Engine. You can see that on this September 2021 update, we have filter on off toggler, uh, glow and halation filters, uh, effects actually, and low and high quality phosphor options for the CRT shadow masks. And we have mip map control this time to create making the images a little bit of blurry, which helps on creating the CRT effects. And also I updated the scanline generator system, which makes uh, creates better scanlines. Also, they are uh, more effective with creating uh, by uh, entering numbers for the scanlines according to your pixel perfect resolution to get the perfect match with the scan lines and the pixels. And I added uh, 3D monitor and TV models. The uh, previous version had a bad uh, TV model. Now I updated it with a greater one. So I also added a seed value for variating the screen hopping effect. Uh, so this helps to create a variation between different uh, TV screens if you have you if you are using multiple one uh, multiple uh, TVs on your scene. So let's see uh, how it works and how they look. So you can see that I added these monitor models and also these are the, some classic TV models design I created and added to this scene. So I added some resolution information in front of this monitors to show you the general match with the pixels. You see that this has nearly a VJ graphic and we have this scan lines and phosphor effects and all of them are also adjustable with different glitches uh, by changing the parameters of this material. So next is another pixel perfect match with the scan lines and also we have this effect and you see that our monitor has a shadow mask if we get close enough to see it and also let me show you that I added a high quality shadow mask you see that this is the high quality shadow mask and if you get if you are using this shadow masks with high intensity like this actually this is how they look on real mo real world but since the engine scalability settings we have some different moir effects and also the color is changes if you use it in full intensity to get rid of these effects if we are not close enough to this shadow masks i added a low quality option so if you remove the tick from this high quality shadow mask you will see that we will be having a much less intense uh, phosphor effects we need to remove the visibility a little bit off and if we get close enough you see that this texture is not creating moir effects if you are getting away from this screen. So if you want to get close up shots with a real look on this monitor shadow masks, you will be able to use this high quality shadow masks to get this effect. So this is a way of using this shadow masks. Another one we have a super VGA graphics from Heroes of Might and Magic game. I added a screenshot of the game and you see that every pixel has this perfect match with the scan lines. 
a way to use this textures I added an image blur parameter which controls the mip mapping of these textures so if I increase it you will see that we have a blurness on the graphics so also we will be having some uh, halo effects so this makes some different effects let me uh, intro introduce it to you on the next monitor so I turned off the halation and I'm increasing the blurness to get the screen image blurred that way this works better because you you don't want to get this sharp ended pixels while you are using uh, the CRT filter the CRT monitors has an effect of blurring the general image a little bit to get this nice smoothed result which works better on this kind of nice pixel art screens so our next stop is another Super VGA graphics from MS-DOS screen so you will see that scan lines are matching better with the text height and also you will see that there is some spectral effect around the white areas these ghost silhouettes of the bright areas called halation or halo effect on the screens actually this is an refraction refracted result of this lit part of the ray gun which reflects from the glass of the monitor itself itself so we have these two uh, we have a refraction of two sides from left to right by this halo effect and let me show you the parameters of this effect as well so actually we are not on the right material right so we have an halo opacity and I will increase it to show you this ghost effect like this this is the exaggerated result of this effect also we have a halo mip level to control the blurness of this ghost refractions let me decrease the opacity back and also this is not a perfect example for that but we have an halo fade effect which controls the threshold of the reflected image of the uh, screen so if you if you switch to here you will see that let me open this preset and show you this halo effect by here I'm increasing the halo opacity a little bit and also creating a halo mip level to make it blurry so you will see that we have this halo effects all around this image but if you want to adjust the threshold I am increasing the halo fade to create the halation by just the bright areas not the all image or the all colors so if I increase this halo opacity and change the halo fade a little bit you will see that we have this bright yellow parts creating some halation and these darker areas are not affected by this halo effect so if I decrease it all the image will be having 
distillation, but the purpose on this kind of effects are to create just the bright textures to be affected by it. So better one is like that. So we are having this and other bright textures to be creating halo effects. So we may have a better one on this one. Let's see. I'm increasing the halo effect. You will see that it has more intense halation on the arms. If I decrease the halo effect, we're getting all image reflected. But if I use a fade value, we will be having just halation on the intense parts. So halo shift helps us to see where we get the halation on this image. So you can exaggerate the halo shift and then adjust your halo fade level to see how much intense halo effect you need on your image to adjust the bottom threshold of your image. So then you can increase the halo opacity to a higher level to see to get a better result and also you can adjust the MIP level but MIP level also be controlled by be affected by the halo fade as well so this is the halo and also we have a glow amount let me drop, turn off the halation and this glow generates a brightened, exponentially brightens the image. So we, that makes a glow effect on the brighter areas to get better fine analog result on your image. So you can turn off it, turn it down or you can exaggerate it like this. Glow MIP controls the general glow blurness around your texture. So this looks better with the desaturation or saturation. If you want to adjust your images saturation levels. So glow will also look good if you adjust it with that. So let me turn down the saturation a little bit. I'm also decreasing the emissive intensity. And this glow looks better with the desaturated image. Like this. So moving on, we are having another customized resolution with the PAL composite output of a Commodore 64 computer. You will see that we also have this nice scan line match according to the pixels. And also this is another pixel art project I made for Commodore 64. And we have the nice match with the scan lines and the phosphor effect or the shadow mask like this. We have another preset which is the CRT TV antenna preset which looks more analog. We can also add some white noise to this screen like this and as usual we can adjust many different glitches for this kind of um, problematic connections with the signals and the TVs. So let's see how we can adjust some 
um, let's see what we are signal distortion which I was looking for and you will see that if we increase it we have a terrible color bleeding around the screen it affects mostly the red values on my setup because the red values has the strange deformations on this kind of antennas so that makes it mostly affected on the more red areas of the image also we have other parameters like screen hop so you will see that if I increase this screen hop frequency we will get much more in, um, oftenly hopped screens and we can change the screen hop intensity to get different results on the screen if I increase it so much you will see that the hopping is more like some disruption on the signal and moving on we are having a black and white TV effect like this which works pretty similar parameters with the other one and also we have a VCR screen let me show you for this texture or for this material we are having a, a, a media player input for the display input not a static image here I'm double clicking it to play the video sequence which I rendered from one of my other projects so you see that there is a camera movement on this video footage and all the effects on my material are applied on this footage you will see that we have signal distortion on the reddish areas we are warp belt uh, which is popular effect on uh, many VCR players and there is some white noise and tracking noise let me adjust them to show you how they work you will see that we are having a tracking noise density here which is an adjustable problem on playing the Betamax or VHS cassettes so this controls the level of this tracking noise you can leave it on the bottom or you can move them all the way up and we have a color tornado effect you see that there is blue and green tornadoes are moving around the screen I mostly saw these effects on the Met Betamax tapes and also we have the timestamp like here we control the opacity of it position and scale can be also adjusted by these parameters this is generated on the side of my scene it's easy to just copy this part to any place of your level to make it work on the screen so all the numbers can be adjustable and the text is ad adjustable by changing the parameters of this instances so this is the VCR effect preset on this TV so let's move on with this post process area because all the most of the effect parameters I show you or uh, that I applied to the screens are also available as a post process filter so I'm 
entering to this area to show you how it affects our scene you will see that screen has a barely distortion we have a black band around it like a TV screen and also we have this um, timestamp of the VCR filter and we are having this general VCR effects on the screen uh, these are all can be enabled and disabled according to your needs by the preset of the post-process material which is here and this way you can adjust the scan line effects let me see if I'm working on the right material so let's switch to the post-process volume yes it was this one and you can change the intensity of the scan lines let me switch to full screen and you can adjust the count of the scan lines like we are doing on the screens as well so there is a pixelation toggle I suggest you to adjust it according to the scan lines because I'm using 160 as a pixelation scale I need to define the scan line count as the half of this pixelation so it will pixel perfect on the scan lines so let's change both of them like this and you will see that scan lines are matches to the pixelation of the screen so you can have a better pixelation by changing your resolution to get a better result as well so one final application is the camera post-process effect like I did here. I switched to the Cine Camera Actor and it has this post-process preset like we had on this post-process area. One different thing is that we are having 4x3 aspect ratio on this camera to match a better TV look and also we have a desaturated image on this preset also we are having this halation as well which looks good and some screen reflection effects on this preset and you will see that this camera effect is also has some tracking noises screen hops and add up any other VCR effects so this is pretty much of everything on this CRT VCR filter pack you can adjust your scan line counts according to the resolution of the image you use on this screens so I hope you enjoy them and thanks for watching. See you on next update.